Hey guys, welcome to the Game Dev Discussion Podcast. This is episode 31. And today we have our very first character artist. We have Gavin Golden, lead character artist at Somniac Games. How are we doing, bro? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, dude, thanks for coming on. Like uh, like it seems to be with anyone over in the States, we uh, it's always fun and games trying to get time zones to line up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope that our uh, levels of uh, tiredness kind of line up you know it's a late over here and super early over there so uh maybe we'll meet somewhere in the middle you know maybe we're, we're like out level of, level a little exhausted yeah yeah like maybe out of all this maybe a few sentences will uh make sense you know <laughs> yeah some, some <laughs> coherent sentences will help will probably help uh help a podcast show along okay um right. so yeah you're my first character artist uh i've been really excited to have you on actually dude because like I've been having lots of materials artists on and like environment artists and I understand them to a certain degree. Um mm-hmm. and the last person I had on who like I had zero understanding of was at least the animator. And mm-hmm. that was actually quite fun and it turned out to be quite helpful to understand, you know, the other side of the fence, so to speak. So hopefully we'll get that done with this podcast. Yeah, I mean hopefully I can uh you know, represent my my people, you know. <laughs> your people. <laughs> so let's um just give a bit of context to everything. What um do you want to talk a little bit about your sort of your lead up into becoming a lead artist? So like, you know, the pathway you particularly took. Sure. I mean how deep do you want to uh do you want to go? Cause I I've been I guess uh, doing character art for about fifteen years now. So uh uh let's I guess stick how, professionally. How far... Just let's let's just say okay. like first <laughs> first professional job. Okay. Uh, and we'll uh, go into here. Okay, sure. So my first actual job was doing uh, pixel art for mobile games. Um, mm-hmm. And again, that was like 15 years ago or so. Um, at the time, I was just doing uh, generalist work. So I do sp- uh, character sprites, do UI. Uh, there's some pre-rendered animation and stuff like that. So it was really... Uh, as much of a generalist as you could be um very small studio uh but before that i knew i wanted to do character art um but you know i kind of just landed this job to get my foot in the door and you know get some experience and try to build up you know my portfolio and stuff like that so after a while um i left that job ended up going to piranha games which is another small studio i'm actually i'm from canada so it was yeah uh a company in vancouver mm-hmm. um so yeah i was doing a character for them that eventually moved on to capcom where i worked on dead rising 2 uh then eventually i made the move to uh, to boston uh, to work at irrational games as their lead character artist on bioshock infinite mm. and from Great there I, that, by the way that was sick oh thank you thank you uh, and then from there i moved um, like after the project was done and uh, DLC got finished up, I moved to LA where I'm currently at uh, Insomniac Games. So I've been the lead there for about six years now. Uh, we worked on Sunset Overdrive and uh, most recently Spider Man. Very nice, but so you've uh, you've been about a bit. Actually, oh, dude, yeah. I've I've bounced around the, from coast to coast a few times now. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Um... During your times when you were early on um, doing like pixel art and the generalist stuff, um, mm-hmm. were you have like you said you you knew you wanted to be a character artist? So what were you having to do? Mm-hmm. Were you going home and you know still working on the craft of character art or? Oh yeah, man. Uh, so before that, I was actually I mean I had a bunch of odd jobs and and stuff. I've kind of rambled about it on Twitter quite a bit, but I've you know I've kind of got like the uh, the end times survivalist. Uh, uh, resume you know what I mean like I was a, a cook and I did like landscaping and roofing and all kinds of stuff and uh, like during all that time I was still working on my portfolio and um, even when I had like the pixel art job I knew it's not what I really wanted to be doing mm-hmm. um, so I would go home uh, yeah and just like work on uh, work on like actual you know game characters and I think at the time like modding was a big thing so I was part of like a few mod teams and uh, would enter uh, competitions on Polycount and and other sites at the time. And yeah, I just really tried to beef up everything to do that. Like I really, you know, I mean, not to shit on the job or anything, but for like the pixel art one, like I really didn't get a lot out of it. Like I kind of yeah. figured out, you know, a lot of uh, 
like presentation skills and doing like you know uh all the ui stuff and things like that but in terms of like getting a new job like that was all uh free time work that i really had to put together for for piranha that came mm-hmm. after that um but yeah man i was burning the candle at both ends actually uh, <laughs> uh i mean it's a I guess a funny story or a uh, tale of caution, but I actually, I, I I worked a lot like at that job. So I think I worked about like 16 hours a day for eight months mm-hmm. and uh, would go home and work on my own stuff until about, you know, three or four in the morning, then get a few hours of sleep and do it all over again. So by the time, like by, you know, months of doing this, I actually got so exhausted that I, uh, like my, my girlfriend at the time, uh, like woke me up on the couch one night and I was still in this like weird half asleep, half awake kind of, uh, state, you know, mm-hmm. where I started just giving her shit about not getting her task done on time, you know? So like wow. in, in my head, i like, I have this weird, like, like I call it the visit from the shadow people. And <laughs> it's like basically this, like, you know, weird hallucination about like, work and shit that you're basically just having this like waking dream so uh yeah man at that point i kind of like i think you and i talked about it on uh, on twitter a little bit but i think that's like you know i uh i would not recommend that you know like i, I think of uh the things that i could go back and not do i think i wouldn't have uh ran myself to the ground like that and i kind of learned a lesson and you know definitely way more mindful and cautious about like you know yeah taking taking time off and uh you know it's the better a better balance man because it can it can get to you you know so but i mean to be fair i mean obviously we spoke on twitter about this but i, I do see it as well as you know your limits now as well though from that experience like i, I was i can't remember i think i've been josh lynch i was talking to about this it was like mm-hmm. getting burnout don't get me wrong burnout sucks like it's it's not good or anything like that where you just you're you know you've pushed mm-hmm. it too far there is mm-hmm. like the silver lining of uh, you now know your limit and you can push yourself to your limit, you know, when you need to back off and take your downtime and chill out. Oh, um, yeah, totally. I mean, I think, uh, you know, you kind of, you found that wall, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, now that I've found it, I'm definitely aware of it for sure. Let's talk a bit about, like, you know, you're developing um, portfolios for character art. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what do you create? Like, what in, in a sense of... For environment art, like you need complete environments. Like that's the sort of the the first thing is if you want to be an environment artist, you need complete environments. In an engine, mm-hmm. real time, um, you know, UE4 being normally the preferred engine. Now the thing with that being is we as environment artists, when it comes to portfolio pieces, obviously push the limits. Like, you know, we you'll never slap a four K texture into a game game engine. Um, in environments, but we do for portfolio pieces. That's that's Mm -hmm. what we do for character artists. Like, um, one, what's okay in portfolios and what, like, I mean, how far is it necessary to take assets? So for character art, it's actually a really common piece of feedback that I give. Um, I mean, every year at GDC, I, I do like a really big, um, portfolio review with a bunch of, uh, a bunch of friends there as part of their, education summit so mm-hmm. i would say like every year i at least see like 100 200 portfolios if we're hiring i've seen thousands in a mm-hmm. year and uh man it's so common to have character portfolios that don't have finished pieces mm-hmm. and i think i think that you know the zbrush or sculpting and like the high poly work is so fun and like so like cool to do that people just want to show that right and Mm -hmm. uh that's only really like 30 percent of the job right because the rest has to be execution and like real-time materials and like topology and and that kind of thing you know so um you kind of like environments where it's you know finishing like a full level for characters like you kind of have to see the rest of that execution right because like a lot of people can sit at zbrush for a few you know a few days few weeks and bang out something really nice looking but then the rest of it is taking it over the finish line getting it into like unreal or something like that and and having it work um mm-hmm. you know and then like fundamentals for uh for like anatomy uh material reads uh, like sculpting fabric um 
uh, really like an understanding of like those, uh, you know, like di different, um, you know, different materials that you'd be creating. Um, but then beyond that, for for um, content that you'd be creating, um, I don't know if it's the same for environment, but for for character, you can really you re you kind of end up putting yourself in this path, right? Like either you're going to do like a stylized kind of work or mm -hmm. like something more realistic. And really, I mean, it's kind of up to you, like what you want to do. I mean, if you were really in love with stylized work and uh, you know, you want to work for whatever, like Riot or something like that, I mean, you should go for it, right? I mean, if that's really where your heart is, um, rather than just being like, well, most games are realistic or have like, you know, that kind of uh, that kind of treatment, like just kind of going for it just because you get a job, right? Like, I think you should kind of, you know, follow what you want to do. But, um, but you do end up kind of like following this. It, it, you gotta kind of keep practicing at it, right? So if like you mm -hmm. want to do realistic humans, you're probably going to do a lot of a lot of busts, a lot of studies, a lot of, um, uh, you know, trying to mimic like the real world, obviously, hence the, you know, hence the name. But yeah. with like stylized, you kind of be doing the same where it's like you're working on more uh, hand painted textures and and uh, things like that, you know, so. I'm curious, do you spend like when you're um, when you're hiring and looking at portfolio pieces, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you pay more attention to topology because, you know, for environment art, like I said, we for portfolio pieces, topology rarely comes into it because we're just trying to make something look as good as possible because environment arts like it's composition and lighting and reading textures mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I assume because character art, obviously one of the fundamentals of character art is the fact that it needs to be able to animate and all that sort of stuff. So when people post portfolio work and it's like, you know, fully textured, real time, I'm assuming you pay more attention to topology and how they've you know, got the low poly working. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely important for us on a, a few different levels, right? I mean, again, it's easy to, if we had a sculpt, it's easy to just kind of throw it through a, a Z remesher and have something that's lower and, and just, you know, toss it into Unreal or whatever. But you kind of have to look at it as in like what's under the hood, like how they'll animate, how they use, uh, you know, geometry to help define the silhouette, help define details, and it kind of helps show an understanding for how something will actually work once they're done creating the the high poly one so we definitely keep you know it's definitely one of the, the more important things i would say like that and uh uh and realistic materials is something that we're looking at um again like a lot of it not that it's like the easiest thing to do but uh like modeling is kind of like the the i would say probably the more common thing to find mm -hmm. but when you find somebody that has a good understanding of like how to get the most out of the mesh mm -hmm. and then getting uh, really good material reads and like telling a story through that uh, that's kind of like the next level for me and like what I what I really look for you know mm -hmm. actually leading on to the uh, next question what about like what for you as someone who like I said you see loads of portfolios mm -hmm. what sort of thing catches your eye personally you know there's certain things when you speak to every sort of artist within a hiring position or in a sort of a lead position there's mm -hmm. certain things that will catch their eye or certain things they like or like to see uh is there anything like i can give an example of yeah uh well i mean there's a few uh different things um for like actual content i'm usually looking more at uh, uh like realism so anything that's more uh, an eye for like interpretation and like an eye for detail um you know like if somebody went the extra mile and added adding like the wear and tear to you know a jacket or something like that and kind of showing a, a story um yeah. like really more than just you know opening the substance uh you know uh you know your substance to the library and throwing like leather on a jacket oh, or something yeah, yeah. it's kind of like you know that extra level of of uh, polish that you'd have uh but then i guess more you know um philosophical is looking for potential you know um because for me as a lead i'm looking for somebody that will bring something to the team somebody that you can help grow somebody that will contribute to the project right so mm -hmm. um it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the the top row art station person all the time what it means is that you know there's uh like they're showing the understanding of fundamentals they're showing that that storytelling in their work 
uh, they're showing like a technical understanding and that they're willing to, you know, learn, willing to grow. And, uh, you know, I, I think like you get a lot more out of, out of that kind of person or portfolio, you know, than you do for something that's like, you know, whatever, the top of the see, line shit, I guess. Uh, can you, go for can it. you see, like, with the potential thing, um, it's something I'm really interested in because, like, like uh, when obviously from a business point of view it makes sense also like you don't want to have to hire the like i said top shelf artist because mm -hmm. they're going to be obviously very expensive you want the um the up and coming artists who you know will be the top shelf artist in like two three years mm -hmm. is a lot of that potential recognition come more in the interview or the sort of the not interview but like um the one-to-one -one inter interactions rather than just what's in their work yeah i think uh I think it's a bit of both. I think like you, you can kind of dig more into it once you start, um, you know, talking with somebody in like the interview uh, process. Mm -hmm. I think with a portfolio, you can see it. You can see it more in like a, a junior level or a, like a mid level where something's not, um, not super polished, but you can see the the steps that they're taking towards that. Right, mm -hmm. like that. If somebody's, you know, again, like going back to the story thing, but this is like something I learned a lot on uh, on Bioshock, right? Where um, like everything's telling a story, right? And you can tell the difference between somebody that puts thought into the work that they're creating versus just making a character model, right? And yeah. like when you have somebody that is showing those signs, like a, a, a technical thing is something you can teach really well, but the understanding and like uh the eye is really hard to to train right so mm -hmm. when you see that it's that's great to me you know because like we can teach software easy like no problem at all right so i think uh like when you see that and then then like the interview process obviously is like you know you get more into the uh whatever you know like digging more into like the the actual artist behind the work yeah so what about like um since you've got like, you know, I say you've got 15 years experience now at this point, mm -hmm. what does, um, some people look in at portfolios, they're like, oh yeah, I'm churning out all these characters, like I'm, I'm just glancing through your portfolio, you know, with Bioshock Infinite, like, all these beautiful mm -hmm. high poly models. Mm -hmm. Um, what does, as a mid-level character artist, what does the day job actually look like? You know, what, what are you guys doing? Because again, it's the same with, um, I imagine it's going to be the same with like, environment art or material art. Your portfolio mm -hmm. looks like it's always lots of fun, you know, level building. In reality, mm -hmm. the majority of the day job is either, you know, LODs or, you know, file management or, <laughs> you know, all right. the tedious shit no one likes to do. Right, What's right. it like in a day job of a character artist? Right. Um, for the most part, uh, the, like, the characters that we work on now usually take about, like, a month or so to do. So for... Uh, you know, for your day to day, usually it's like head down, maybe a few meetings, but it, it'll be like modeling or like getting like the materials going and stuff on a on a character. Mm -hmm. um, we do uh, have quite a, quite a bit of interaction with Rigging, uh, who's our you know kind of our uh, our tag team partner, and mm -hmm. and dealing with uh, animation and and design. So usually throughout those phases, it kind of depends on what your day will be, but if you're creating a block out for a character you'll be working more with uh animation design to make sure that it's hitting all the right requirements for gameplay mm -hmm. uh then for the big chunk in the middle you're you know usually like putting on headphones listen to a podcast and like sculpting away right mm -hmm. and uh you know then with like any handoff um uh any handoff that you do you'd be talking with the rigging and animation to make sure that it's it's correct and uh you know, fixing any anything you need to do to make it uh, deform properly and, and stuff like that. Um, of course, you know, we'll do anything that, like any other office, like we'll have, um, you know, like our team meetings, we'll do stand-ups and, and uh, things to review work, do some peer review. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually give, you know, the team will usually give uh, feedback to each other as they're working. So doing like pain overs and, and stuff through, uh, through Slack. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you actually have got quite a. So as a character artist, you are spending the majority of your time just creating characters. Like, do, this, apart from obviously your, what sounds like you're rigging an animation stage, mm -hmm. um, you are sort of 
in the software most of the time then yeah i, I would say so uh, we don't really so i guess with the environment you'd be dealing uh i say dealing but you'd be you know interacting more with uh like design or or lighting right to like help mm -hmm. build uh build the world out um for character a lot of it is on like shared rigs and uh like once you kind of get the block out done like your your than just trying to finish it right so yeah. uh like a, it's kind of like a front-loaded thing i guess it would be like a, a curve right like in the beginning you're probably dealing more with other departments mm -hmm. and in the end you're dealing with other departments but in the middle a lot of it's in the software and and uh yeah just making the art um i would say like as you advance like the more the more senior you get the more you're working with the the team in a like a mm -hmm. mentorship kind of capacity so you'd be doing more reviews, uh, more meetings with other departments, um, working more with producers, and you know, doing like reviews and, and things like that. And with leads, I mean, like my actual art making from day to day is pretty pretty low because a lot of it is like giving feedback or or working with like creative directors and art directors and uh, like outsourcing vendors, producers, and stuff like that. So I definitely am in a lot more meetings, but for your uh, you know staff level character artist it's, a lot of it is just in the software so with you as a lead you've spent a lot of time being a lead at this point what um mm -hmm. how like and this is probably gonna be a really hard question to answer you said yourself is the eyes are hard to to train like what how do you train your character artists like once they've come in house and they're in your studio i mean they're mm -hmm. already going to be boss level character artists otherwise they wouldn't be there mm-hmm what uh, is there anything any little extra steps you normally push people in that helps you know get the most out of your artist or is this so individualistic that it's like it's impossible to quant quantify uh no i i think there's uh i guess like a method to the madness in a way um mm -hmm. i think different artists will gravitate to different things um i think different studios are set up different ways too uh You've cut out, buddy. Uh, oh, you're back. You're like back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, like different studios will have different um, workflows, right? So you'll end up having specialists more, where you'll have, you know, like a, a hair specialist, or you know, down to this is the person that makes shoes, or this is the person that makes armor, or like, like this is a hard surface artist and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the teams that I've been on, um, I really try to keep it more uh varied where you know one assignment might have a uh, hard surface one assignment might be like more clothing and like more anatomy and things like that so it, it kind of keeps you i feel like it keeps it more interesting because you're not just like stuck in this uh on this one thing all the time um but when i bring in somebody new we end up having we end up having like a ramp up plan mm -hmm. and i'll try to get them kind of like a sampling of everything that they would be doing uh long term right so it kind of helps them learn bit by bit and that'll usually be you know like you're creating variants for something or uh you're you know you're optimizing a character or something like that so you're kind of you're kind of seeing the the whole trajectory but like quicker in a way mm -hmm. and um yeah from there um i really try to if you're like a a more junior artist um i just still try to give more opportunity like more like big ticket items right because i feel that like if you you kind of get that ball past you and you're more invested into it that you can um you know really push yourself and kind of learn quicker and again yeah. like the team's there to give you more uh give you feedback and help each other out like like my team's really really tight really friendly like really good at helping each other out and really supportive so you know we try to have that culture where you know you you don't just kind of come in and you end up making shoes for three years or something like that like mm -hmm. we you know you get uh you know like you know on, on spider-man you'd have like a variant or or like an enemy character or something like that and the rest of the team's kind of pushing you to um you know to your best um, no, I do agree on that, the whole, like, giving them something a bit more, um, which has a bit of weight to it, because, like I said, 
when you when you let the artist take the ownership and responsibility of it, you mm-hmm. you do try a little bit harder. When you want something a little bit crappy and you know it's crappy, you're like mm-hmm. you treat it like that. You treat it like it's uh, this low interest thing. When you give mm-hmm. them something pretty important, they know it's important, so they give it everything. And I think that's mm-hmm. pretty universal. I think that goes across uh, um, multiple disciplines and probably industries as well. Actually, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I would think so. And I mean, I think it's uh, it's just a good feeling, you know. And mm-hmm. I mean, again, I can like empath- empathize with it too. I mean, like my re- my first few jobs. I mean, the first few years that I was working, you know, it's you know, I'm making a I'm making like health bars or I'm making you know uh, like low level characters and stuff so you know then i just end up going home and i'm i'm working more to try and like be be uh content with what i'm doing so i'm trying to like push people more like when they're at work and like get the most out of them and have it feel like rewarding you know Mm -hmm. um yeah and then like just for like learning and uh trying to kind of help develop that eye i think that that kind of helps you quickly learn what is um, I guess acceptable or like a polished asset. Like, what's the difference between just finishing it versus having it uh, be like ready for you know public consumption and uh, things like that? But it's definitely a process, and you know I don't really expect anybody like even from like the like the most junior artist to the most senior artist like on day one. Like I don't expect you know the uh, things to be perfect, right? So we're definitely mm-hmm. more. Uh, again like supportive and giving like time for people to like learn the ropes and you know kind of figure out the uh i guess the cadence of how we how we make uh art at work that sounds good man what about in like you know you're in 2019 now Mm -hmm. what advice are there for character artists now like you know if you're say someone's at college they're about to go to university and they're like i want to be a character artist because one of the myths i remember hearing um when i was younger was oh, I'm not going to do character art because there's no jobs for it. There's barely any jobs for it, and you have to be, like, the best of the best. Now, mm-hmm. I put that down to... I personally believe that is to be ignorance and not knowing what the possibilities are. Now, I might be wrong, but, you know, mm-hmm. when you're, you're a young artist now looking to get to character art, what's, like... What advice is there in 2019? You know, what um, habits are worth looking at? Pipelines... You know, learning resource for character art because you know I could reel off fifty things for Roman art, but I know nothing about character art pipelines or what learning resource is out there. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I guess going going back to what you're saying with uh, um, you know people that want to do character art but kind of shy away from it because there's no opportunities or whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I <laughs> like I think a lot of my career is built on on spite you know and built on (laughs) on like you know going going against going against that right because i mean that that's what i was told a lot is that you know you'd never you'd never make it there's only like a handful of jobs out there it's like so hard to get in and it is hard to get in there's definitely there's fewer character art jobs than there are environment Mm -hmm. um only because there's way more environment in games than there are characters yeah and it's very very competitive but you know, I not to give like a cliche or whatever, but I mean, you know, life's short. You know what I mean? It's like if you if you really want to make characters and that's what you want to do, then go for it, man. You know, but you just got to work for it, and I think you'll get the opportunities as long as you keep keep working, keep improving. Um, and then for like actual, uh, yeah, actual like pipeline, uh, like workflow. I think a lot of the things I see is. I'm, I'm trying not to like rail on on schools as I have many many times. But Don't worry, uh, I've done it in every single podcast. <laughs> oh really? Okay, shit. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> man, maybe uh, maybe maybe this can be a longer episode then. Um, but uh, I, I think a lot of the things that I see is dated. Yes. Like a dated process, right? So you end up having like our standard now would be you know like substance or something like that for like creating materials and textures Mm -hmm. and you know like uh pbr and uh uh you know even like scan data marvelous designer um to try and replicate real uh 
real life as much as we can. And I think there's like a gap between what uh, I'm not sure if this is answering the question, but I think there's like no, a no, gap between what uh, someone is told is right. And I think a lot of students will think that they're on the right path because they're, they're, uh, you know, the lecturer they're told them so. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like their teachers like gave them an A plus or whatever. Mm. And, you know, that might be true for the class, but what you're getting taught in the class is like 10 years behind what the rest of us are doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had students that were in that situation, but then in their own time are doing, you know, they're doing characters like we would do at work, right? Mm -hmm. And like that kind of, I mean, obviously that shows initiative, but it's also kind of a shame that, you know, you're paying a fuck ton of money and you have to go do it on your own, right? But yeah, I digress. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, so I guess that's kind of part of it, right? Is, you know, it, it's... I mean, I guess it's easy to say, like, go to art station and, like, look at what people are doing. Like, look at people that you're admiring and kind of copy that as much as you can. But, you know, I guess, like, what I'm looking for is that understanding of uh, process and trying to show, yeah, again, even if it's not, like, perfect, but showing that you you understand the, the pipeline. Like, you've used, you know, Marvelous and then ZBrush, you Max, Maya, whatever, for, like, retopology. Topology solid. It'll... You could rig that up and have it running around and then clean bakes from, uh, you know, substance and then render it out in like Marmoset or Unreal or something like that, right? So kind of showing a, a more modern from beginning to end. But, you know, I, I get like tons and tons of applicants that are going for like a job on my team, right? That, you know, we've been working on modern consoles for quite a while and you'll get work that just isn't at that level yet yeah. and I, I guess um well it's not just like wow it's not good enough but what it shows me is that you don't understand what that gap is and that's really hard to i guess that's where the the potential thing is right because it's really hard to show somebody that doesn't see that difference you know yeah. and it's like it's uh yeah that's really hard to get over i guess but uh I don't know. I think I think I'm rambling now. But. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's uh. I want to just go back to the university thing. Like, I've seen this in real time, like recently, because I uh, I go and do a lot of university lectures, mm -hmm. and nearly every single time I finish with, please, for the love of God, go follow these communities, you know, such as mm -hmm. Dynasty, because. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried to work out what I, what I was trying to like say. I did it like three, four times, and it weren't until the fourth or fifth time I actually worked out what I meant. And it was basically like, if you decide to go to university, you're not going to university to develop your professional skills because university can't facilitate that. I mean, they very rarely teach like purely environmental, purely materials, or purely character. It's normally game art in general. Mm -hmm. And when you're that general, and you've only got X amount of hours in the day. Like, you're not going to hit the areas you need to hit. So mm -hmm. I ended up finishing up a lot of my talks by just saying, like, university, you go to develop yourself as a social person. Your social skills, your people skills, your team skills. Mm -hmm. But you develop as a professional in your own time. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, like I said, that sucks because you're paying a fuck ton of money and uh, you're not developing as a professional. And that's, like, I've got a whole beef with the education system for game art in general because I think it needs to be more specialised, but... You could that's mm -hmm. like a six hour conversation in itself, but yeah. Well, I mean, what, I've got I've got time. I'll stay up until three in the morning. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what? Okay, so like, okay, let's dive into this. Coming from the um, the environment point of view, uh, I was speaking mm -hmm. to a, a lecturer uh, on Monday, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up substance, and I'm going to I haven't used substance before, but I'm going to teach materials, and I'm like, well, <laughs> materials is a is a whole year in itself to learn. Like, if right. it was to me, if you got three years, I'd be like, it, this purely environment I'm talking right now. Mm -hmm. It'd be a year on modeling and your modeling skills and your understanding of like, you know, high poly, like um, ZBrush or high poly in modeling packages, just purely modeling. Second year would be all about like texturing, you know, understanding materials, generating materials, using painter, using designer. And then the last year's implementation. So 
getting an engine, understanding engine work and all that sort of stuff. That's environment. Mm-hmm. If it's up to you, if you could set up a character course, what would be your like three main block, your three, your three years to teach? How would you do it? Oh, because wow. at the moment, game art is like, get, I swung to this course lead and it's like, they learn a little bit of programming, a little bit of UI, a little bit of animating, mm-hmm. a little bit of rigging, a little bit of modeling, a little bit of ZBrush, mm-hmm. a little bit of materials, you know, a little bit of engine. And I'm like, you're not really teaching any of this. You're sort of reading a document and it's up to the students to actually actually learn it at home. Mm-hmm. You sort of give them the words they need to search for and they search in their own time. Mm-hmm. Like, what would universities of education need to do to make character art more viable as a as an education thing? So at the moment, I don't think it is. Yeah. I don't think any education no, game art's right. I mean, for the most part, I don't think it is. Um, it, it's interesting. So I, uh, actually, I, uh, I'm a dropout. Like, I dropped out of college um Mm -hmm. because of basically because of that same thing so when i when i was in school this is obviously a long time ago but when i was in school i was learning um like everything dude and like i uh not everything obviously um (laughs) but like uh you know we would do i was doing 2d animation at the time so uh doing that doing 3d animation doing 3d modeling texturing uh compositing effects um all kinds of stuff right and for the final year you were supposed to do this project that had all of those things that you learned come like put together into one thing right so you know everything from fucking storyboarding concept all the way up to this fully rendered short film Mm -hmm. right and what you end up doing is having a lot of mediocre work right Mm -hmm. because you can only like you're basically taking what would be a team project of like 15 people you know Mm -hmm. and making one person do it who hasn't been given enough time to learn any of those things properly right Mm -hmm. and i ended i ended up dropping out because i wanted to do at the time i wanted to do uh character art uh, like for sure right and i at the at that time it would have been like probably like Paul Steed would have been like the the guy, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like looking at that kind of stuff, like, okay, that's what I, that's what I want to do. Like him or like Bay Rate, like, you know, like the, you know, guy who made Gollum or whatever. Um, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's like, yeah, I want to make that shit. Right. And they wouldn't let me because it wouldn't match the curriculum. Right. Like it wouldn't <laughs> match, like it won't, if I just make a like I if I just make a character demo reel, which I hate, I fucking hate character demo reels. Uh, but like, what do you mean by character demo reel? Uh, so uh, there's uh, actually I actually have an article written about why I hate character or uh, <laughs> demo reels. But um, but basically you'll have okay, like a uh, little tangent on this, but you'll have uh like a posed character ideally, and it'll spin around in a 360 oh in a video. yeah 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 turntable so you'll have like whatever a three minute video of that right right the reason i don't like it is are many but uh you're not it, it's fine just having an art station portfolio that's what you should do um but uh at the time i'm like okay well i'll do i'll, I'll do a video but i just want it to be character turnarounds or turntables right and they wouldn't let me because I'm not showing storyboarding or anything else, right? So I, I quit, right? And I just went off and did it myself. Um, so I guess going back, like what I ended up doing, what I definitely would not do is uh, make people learn uh, disciplines that aren't adjacent to what they're doing, right? So I, I can understand if you're a character artist, if you're in this character art major or whatever, um, understanding rigging and understanding animation, you'd get you know you'd understand why you're making these like uh modeling choices right Mm -hmm. because like how you how it would actually function so you're not blindly just handing it over um but for the uh the actual stages i mean i I think fundamental art is, is is um missing you know like learning uh you know anatomy like balance of detail like color theory stuff like that uh i still think it's important um uh than just sculpting modeling 
uh, doing studies in 3D and trying to translate, you know, what you see in the real world into 3D. Uh, then, um, you know, doing uh, like material reads, right? I think would be, you know, a good, a good kind of um, whatever full loop, full circuit, I guess. Yeah. Um, but another thing is that uh, you'll still get a lot of like character art that it's real time but it's not in real time like it's not rendered in unreal or it's not rendered in like marmoset or anything like that you'll just have it rendered out in what it, whatever it be in like maya now like mental ray or something yeah and that's again that's not like finishing the 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 job you know what i mean like none of us would do that right so i think just kind of giving that that final like context right like actually being able to, you know, <laughs> show something like game art in in a game, you know, would be good. Um, yeah, that do that. I could ramble forever about well, uh, about so school and. So what you mentioned then, my... so it talks about color theory and teaching our fund- fundamentals. I thought mm-hmm. about this because I agree. I do think it's important. Do you think that's probably more where the uh, potential thing comes in? Because I find understanding so okay, that's like color theory and visual mm-hmm. rest and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. The way I ended up coming about understanding it wasn't because I didn't go through the education system um, was I I spent most of my time observing art and absorbing art I always look over people's work I'm always going through and I like I'm always asking myself why do I like it why do I dislike mm-hmm. it and you end up at these points you end up at you know oh it's got a really good colour palette or it's got a really good balance between noise and visual rest or like where the detail is or the detail makes sense mm-hmm. all of these art fundamentals is from observing art and absorbing art mm-hmm. Does that probably more come back to the potential thing where not everybody has the state of mind or like the willingness to just sit and observe that and ask the question why, why do they like it? Mm-hmm. The people that do are probably the ones who are going to pick up the art fundamentals quick out or pick them up full stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, having that knowledge definitely makes it, kind of gives you an edge, right? I mean, I think, uh, I don't know if this is like a, a controversial thought or a, a hot take or whatever as uh, people would say <laughs> but i mean I, I don't think it's necessarily yeah i'm i'm definitely of the mindset that you can train what we do like i, I think it's a a trade i think i think yeah. it's a, a skill a skill that you can learn like 100%. i don't think it's necessarily like a a gift or anything like that so oh, i man, think don't say that shit nothing's ever a gift no, no. Talent. <laughs> so, it's all horseshit. right 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 so uh, i think that that skill definitely gets you can develop it and i think once you start thinking more about why something is appealing to you it does help you uh develop like your own work better right Mm -hmm. um uh and i I think there's you know i mean i'm not like putting a lot of thought into it just kind of rambling now no no, this is good this is good this is uh, yeah (laughs) but I, i think like may maybe a lot with school and just replicating things like just just making something to pass the class and not really understand why you're doing it is kind of ties into that right where it's like you're following a tutorial or like you're following even like if you you download like a gumroad tutorial or something and you follow it it's like well i i did step by step and i learned how to do it but you don't really understand why you're doing it you know like so i think kind of that that studying of other people's work uh it, it doesn't have really have to be like well you studied the masters and now you now you understand this like yeah. deep, on a deep yeah. level like nothing like that but it's like <laughs> man like for me i i like grew up just consuming comics and video games and stuff like that right and it's like well why do i why do i like you know paul bonner's work right it's like well it's like interesting uh interesting silhouettes interesting features uh he has a great material contrast. Uh, he's definitely telling a story and everything, like every piece that he's making and like, you know, the like rendering level of like detail and things like that. It's like, well, that's what I like, right? So why don't I start making, you know, stylized work to towards that, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's not just like copying, it's understanding the choices that somebody made so that you can make similar choices in your own work. And I think with... Uh, maybe with school or some schools, you know, like they don't really get into that, right? Like you'll, you'll see like art history or something. 
but you don't really understand like you don't kind of get that breakdown and you don't kind of get encouraged to you know try and you know go down that that path and figure out why somebody would make the choice that they did you know yeah well that's the problem with whole education i think this is the problem with education in general when you get into what we do is that your whole education is up to this point absorb information and regurgitate it it's like word it slightly differently like that's that's the education system in a nutshell mm-hmm. what we do is like it's about take absorbing someone's work and interpreting it rather than regurgitating mm-hmm. it and mm-hmm. uh an example i give to um the students whenever I, whenever i have an opportunity to talk is there's um a materials artist daniel tiger he has like um two tuto- types of tutorials he has like ones where he step by step makes a material so like um I don't know, concrete. And he will be like, I put this node here, and I use these values, and then I put this node here, I put these values. And I'll follow the types of tutorials, and at the end of it, I, I'm just sort of left feeling a bit flat, because you haven't really learned anything. You've learned mm-hmm. the sort of, the jigsaw. You haven't learned how to draw, mm-hmm. you've learned how to put a jigsaw together. And then he mm-hmm. did a, sort of a series where he's like, he's still talking about the fundamentals and how I create these broader shapes, and there's like multiple ways of doing it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I've actually learned something, because I've learned why he chose to use that technique over that technique or yeah that type of thing mm-hmm. and yeah. i do feel like the when i spoke to the students on um what the lecturer sorry monday like one of his big, biggest frustrations and i put this literally down to the whole education system from like day one and i'm not sure how you combat this because the education system is what it is through like junior and secondary school f- for mm-hmm. whatever reason but he was like oh yeah make a vehicle i'm not gonna tell you what type of vehicle just go make a vehicle and mm-hmm. all the students could say is, yeah, but what vehicle? Like, he's like, well, what do you want to make? You know, make a make a car, make a tank, make a helicopter, make a submarine, make a spaceship. Like, whatever you want to make. Just, it's this vehicle, mm-hmm. whatever you want to do. And all they could say, they, they needed that, like, um, that push. Because yeah. up until that point, they've always been told what to do, what to think, and how to do it. Mm-hmm. That they don't have that ability to sort of, you know, I don't want to say use their imagination, because that's probably not fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they haven't really developed that skill of interpreting what they like and making it their own. Yeah. They need to be told. Yeah, and then translating it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and totally. I don't, like, and I, like, I, this is why I'm so anti-school a lot of the time, is that I see it from, like, how my education's gone. You know, I was sort of not doing great, and then I joined a community, like, I joined a dynasty community, and... All of a sudden, I had all these different opinions mm-hmm. coming in, and I had you know you have to learn to filter it. You have to learn whose opinion you're going to listen to. Who you know, learn how to interpret critique and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't do that in school, in universities at least. You've literally got a lecturer knows best, students mm-hmm. to second level, and then there's me. There's like it's super linear and simple. Where in reality, I mean, in studio, you'll know like if a producer says oh it gives you a bit of art critique and then your lead mm-hmm. gives you a bit of art critique it's like you need to weigh up and be like the lead art is clearly the art critique i need to listen to mm-hmm. you know everyone has an opinion which is fine but it's like be that ability to filter whose opinion you need yeah. to actually take seriously it's something mm-hmm. that you don't yeah. talk at school either and i see that with like juniors coming to studios they're like get sort of deer in the headlights they try to apply everyone's feedback yeah and it's like mm-hmm. you, they've never learned to filter mm-hmm. yeah it's like you you can't really uh you don't really know what the priority is you know so you end, like everything kind of end, ends up becoming uh you know equal priority from anybody right you kind of drink it from the uh the fire hose so to speak. yeah yeah i feel like um yeah because i mean when i when I uh, when I left school, it was around the time when I joined Polycount, um, yeah. and I mean that's really like where I learned how to do it. You know, like there was you know a group of uh, friends that I had from there that I still have now. Like you know we've been together, quote unquote, for whatever like fifteen years now. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's really just that exposure, right? Because when I was in school, I mean I was you know like top of my class did great um but you're kind of only great within your 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 bubble right like so i kind of came out of 
uh, kind of came out of that school thinking I was hot shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, I, I wasn't dude, like I sucked yeah. and, uh, you know, I'm just a good student, <laughs> right? I'm just not a, I just wasn't a good artist at the time. And with poly count, I ended up getting exposed to a lot of different opinions. Like really at the time was really harsh feedback and, uh, you know, you take it and you work with it. And even through there, you start seeing, it's like, well, you know, like this person, I really like their work and I would like, not, I want to be like them, but I kind of trust their opinion more than some random that, you know, I, I don't know what they've made or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you kind of start like, well, I'm looking for feedback from this person. Then like, you kind of start talking to them and, then you kind of build up this, you know, kind of, uh, you know, click or like subgroup yeah. or whatever, right? Where it's like you're you're kind of bouncing ideas off each other and you get like more feedback that way. And for, like I kind of think, unfortunately, you know, with uh, social media, it's it's kind of I don't know if it's like killed that kind of community, but it definitely doesn't seem as it's not the same it as it used to be. I think it's moved. What's up? Um, I think that community thing has moved. Like, because I, I did actually go on Polycount. I never used Polycount. It was uh, mm -hmm. like, so I guess you could say before me. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I'll always say, I think it's something similar for me. Like, with, because with Dynasty, there's like a group of us. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, I take feedback from everyone. I'll always, everyone has an opinion and everyone's opinion is valid. Mm -hmm. But there's like, um, I said, uh, I always said it's like, I take a grain of salt with everyone who says something, but there's like a tight group who I'm mm -hmm. like, if they say something, I seriously listen. It doesn't matter who it is or what it is. There's like six or seven guys who most of them are guys I've met in the Dynasty Discord that is friends from there. Mm -hmm. um, other artists and they're like, if they say something, I seriously listen. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. why do they say that? I've really figured it out. What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I think them, this, them communities, I have to admit, social media has... Um, I, Social media I feel is like, a great place for it, put it that way. Facebook groups and yeah. shit like that, I'm like... It, well, I, I feel little. like what it's done, it, it's taken... Because, like, from polycount or anything like that, you would have... There's no real approval system. You know what I mean? It's like, you might get top row or something, but it's not... Um, it wasn't the same. Whereas now I feel that a, a lot of... I, this makes me sound super fucking old, dude, but I, I feel... It, there is definitely a danger to fishing for likes or fishing for oh, like that yeah. kind of like that kind of validation. Yeah. And I think that, like, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't take much to prove that that's not like a measurement of quality, right? So you could have, you know, somebody that's doing okay work, but they have like a thousand likes or something. And it's like, well, that's some kind of validation to me that i'm doing good and i won't take you know you're not really open to taking the feedback because it's like well i have you know i have this currency or something that's going yeah. right and i think it kind of you know i mean i think it kind of ends up creating this well kind of it, sil siloed outlook you know and you don't really you don't really grow the same way that you do with the a community based on feedback like you know what you have with like discord or um you know, like I had with poly counter or something like, you know, anything like that, I, I think is way more, way more beneficial for sure. Oh yeah. hundred um, percent. I, I, I'm a testament to it in terms of the chase and the likes things. It's a bad idea. Like, so I, I, you probably know as an hour station, use that material balls for some reason, mm -hmm. none of our get love. They just always seem to mm -hmm. get love. And mm -hmm. for a while I was like, okay, well, all I'm going to do is material balls because people like them. And clearly that's what people like. And that means that's what studios like. Mm -hmm. So I was going to do these all day. And I was throwing them out to the point where I didn't even want to do them, but I was like, nah, I need to do them because this is what people like, and this is what studios right. want to see. You have like Chase a shader ball qu quota you need to hit. You know? Yeah, exactly. And I was like, <laughs> and it got to the point where I quit art for about five, six months, where I was just like, I just don't want to look at this anymore. I'm done with it. And mm -hmm. luckily came back, a few friends helped me, um, started showing out environments and sort of refocused. Um, but yeah, I there is a a danger. We're mainly talking about our station at this point. You know, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I 
you know, if my mum likes something, it really means very little. Twitter, <laughs> it means very little. Right. Even Instagram, it's like, it means very little when people like shit. It's like, our stations mm-hmm. where it's like, well, they're artists. So if they like it, that's important. Mm-hmm. I would like to see, um, actually, let's see, let's see what you think of this then. Would you be open to the whole, like, you know, Instagram are hiding public mm-hmm. likes? Oh, totally. You, yeah. Do you think that's something that might alleviate that 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 issue? If I mean, yeah. if our station followed that similar thing. Yeah, cause I think with uh, with Art Station too, like you get um, uh, like you, our artists end up comparing themselves to other artists that get likes, right? Mm-hmm. And there's like a lot of, again, it's like you're, it, it's confusing your own personal. Uh, improvement mm-hmm. uh, for like you know banking in like whatever traffic goes to your work or something right and like there's a lot of different like factors to it I mean you could have you know maybe this person shares the shit out of their, their work maybe it's like a different time uh, you know something's going I guess more viral right like if it's uh, getting passed around a lot but that doesn't necessarily mean that like you're getting any better or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So, I think it. I, I think it would be generally healthier if there if it wasn't visible and if like you just focused on the work and you're kind of able to, um, see either where like you're falling short or how you could improve or or if something like you're really proud of and you just want to put up there, you know. I think it's, um, just generally like a better way of, of looking at it, you know, versus being hung up on something that really doesn't matter in the end you know yeah because it is hard because uh, there is a certain amount of validation from oh totally like, dude i'm a i'm a, like a fucking a twitter fiend you know what i mean like I, i'm on there all the time and i mean art I station mean, I, i've got i mean like with an artist art with, you you see another mm-hmm. artist if they have loads mm-hmm. of likes you mm-hmm. you i'm not saying it validates them as an artist but if i see say person with 100 likes and i see mm-hmm. a person with ten thousand, mm-hmm. i'm like mm-hmm clearly that person's got to be at least somewhat good you know what yeah. i mean like it doesn't it doesn't give them a pass but mm-hmm. it makes me go I mean, okay clearly they are at least somewhat right decent. clearly at, at, least, at least at least at least ten thousand people think exactly this exactly or whatever. yeah so it's like that's the yeah. balance because yeah i shouldn't compare myself to that person because they've got probably like 30 years experience they're mm. shit hot or whatever Right. But it mm-hmm. helps give you a point of reference. But then there's obviously the bad side mm-hmm. of it because I'm comparing myself and that's not good. It's ha- mm-hmm. That's the difficulty bit because I like having that point of reference. Yeah. I, I think, like, for me, um, I guess, like, I, I just come from, you know, like, when I was coming up or whatever, you would have top row, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that would be on, like, Polycount or CG Talk or, uh, you know, whatever at the time, right? I feel like that was kind of like more of a a reward or like a validation, right? Because you get the I get the editor's award or something like that. Um, but with like, I get like why having uh, having more likes or whatever on your your work is kind of like a a validation. But then mm-hmm. I guess what I'm what I'd be fearful of is that then you're just making something for likes versus actually yeah, dissecting yeah. the work you know what i mean and i think it's what a lot of people end up doing i wonder if it's the same thing as what we were talking about with burnout at the beginning you need to um it's like a rite of passage you once you've gone through burnout you, you know you know your wall you know your limit maybe mm-hmm. similar to that because like now with me i'm like okay every piece i'm thinking about okay i'm doing environments now like more environments but i'm like looking at it like that what do i need to get better at what i need to think about Mm-hmm. And that's only because I was just churning out materials at one point, trying to get likes, and I sort of went, this isn't the way to do it. I'm not getting better. Mm-hmm. And I had to look at environments and start, like, you know, thinking about that. But I wouldn't have got to this point without first doing the bullshit material churn. Right, yeah. I think there's definitely, like, a moment of, like, what am I doing, you know? Yeah. And I, I think, uh, whatever. I mean, I'm not a... I'm not a self-help person or anything like that, right? <laughs> but I think, like, I think, like, I do think eventually you'll find that it doesn't make you happy. You know what mm. I mean? And that, yeah, you kind of get that, like, dopamine thing of somebody, you know, 
approves of your work or something, right? Mm-hmm. And you're kind of like chasing that, but then you're just going to realize that you're just doing it for the approval of strangers, you know? And yeah. I think like once you start focusing more on the things that, that make you happy in the first place, then you'll start getting, you know, whatever, more work or you start getting more like attention or more, you know, uh, you know, heat on your work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it takes a, you know, I think it's just like a formative thing. Like, I think you just got to kind of hit that, that wall, you know, before you, you know, realize like, you know, <laughs> no, <it's fine. laughs> how, how, like, how, how satisfying it is, I guess. Dude, I think that's a that's a pretty tidy little place to wrap up. Uh, we go for an hour so far. Um, oh sure. I finish the podcast every time with a, a similar question. It's gonna be an interesting one for you. If you go back okay. to yourself when you're like you're eighteen, beginning of your career, um, what advice would you give to yourself? Would would you would you say anything to yourself? <laughs> uh you know, I'm sure there's like a lot of things that I could say. You know. Uh, you know, invest in invest in Netflix or Apple or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but uh, honestly, like I'm, I don't really have any like regrets over what I mm-hmm. like how, what I've done. You know, and I, I think like a lot of it was kind of a slow start for me. Again, like I started, you know, doing basically doing a different job and kind of like working my way up. But I feel that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have learned and I wouldn't have, you know kind of got to where I am now right so I, I don't think I could really uh go back in time and get my my past self to to cheat or anything like that but uh yeah man I don't know I wish I had uh I wish I had something cool or no, no, clever no, to, probably, to tell myself but that's bad. That's bad. Like, <laughs> but, I completely yeah. understand if it's like you know sometimes it's a case of I don't regret where I am and I'd like to end up in the same place again if I could do it all over again mm-hmm. but that's fair yeah I mean I, it, yeah it's the uh, uh what is it like you can't touch anything when you go back in the the past, you yeah, know. Yeah. Like I don't want to, I don't want to uh, tip off young Gavin, and then uh, you know, before you know it, I'm just on the the street asking for money or something <laughs> like that, you know. So <laughs> yeah, that's fair, dude. Right, yeah. Gav, it's you don't want me to call you Gav. Uh, no, dude, go it's, for been it. a, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on. You, it's been really good. I'm sorry that I started off as quite a. Uh, an interview process is I'm trying to I've had a lot of questions out for me as an ignorant person to character art I, I needed to get answered um, yeah no, yeah, no worries man it's been on. great no thanks for having me and uh, next time we'll we'll do a, uh, a schools only episode you know Ooh, you don't know how much I'd like to do that <laughs> that'd be fun and then, then, right. then I stop getting invited to universities no but yeah dude it's been a pleasure everyone is listening please remember to like follow and subscribe but Gavin Good pleasure having you on, dude. Thanks for having me. Peace out.